Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Strip Away channel. I am just learning new things and strip away negative misconceptions. It is a beautiful Sunday morning and I am so excited to be here talking to you guys yet again. It's been a while. I'm inconsistent with my videos. Intern year has been but I'm just gonna try to put them out there um, as frequently as I can. Uh, today I'm just gonna reflect on medical school um, a year post graduation now and talk about studying my challenges as a student and how I figured it out for me, in case it helps any one of you out there. So let's jump right in there. Okay, so um, my school is PBL. I went to University of Limerick. It's a problem-based learning style, self-directed learning vibes. I was not a fan. Um, I was used to the didactic type of teaching where you, um, you know, go to lectures, you use lecture as your sort of context and um, to read around the topic and your lecturer would pin to you towards how to um, what's going to come up or how to study and everything would be fine when i was in ucd doing my undergrad in neuroscience honestly i would do notes for most of the semester turn up um two weeks prior to exams and put my head down and study and all was fine i got through and i was happy out so coming into medical school with that energy was not a good idea and did not end well because a my school was different so there was not much lectures going on and the lectures were not there to um tell you what to do they were there to just inform you or guide you so a that was a bit of a different thing for me to get used to and b the whole idea of making notes and then studying later was what i did for the leaving cert junior cert junior cert leaving cert um college and you know, I struggled. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a bit of a disaster. Now, coming into a postgraduate medicine, you're in class where people who were in their 50s, 40s, 20s, masters, PhDs, people have gone through education, they know their learning style, they know what works, they know a lot. I was coming in, you know, like a lot of people too, from a, from a first degree, but I suppose I'm trying to highlight that if you have a different way of learning and it's worked for you for a period of time, go into a more fast-paced learning, challenging area, you have to get used to their system and how to learn for that particular um, type of type of style. So that is what I would say was happening for me. So every year, for because it was a four-year degree, first year, second year, third year, and final year, I was tweaking my study style and ability um, a little bit. And by final year, I finally found what worked for me and what made sense and how to go about it what was right for my personality and going forward as I um, start my uh, BST training and examinations, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to myself because it works and it's scientifically proven for me, tailored for me. So that's why I wanted to share my journey because it might just help people. So I'm just trying to lay the context here. So I suppose to go into it then, you would ask yourself, um, how did I do it? So like I said, I would make eons of notes like pages and pages i remember in college one of my friends used to be like every you were terrifying because i'd come in with folders worth of notes but none of that stuff was in my head and um, it was all on paper and then i'd cram coming into medicine medicine is a fast-paced learning environment it is i used to, i in final med i said to one of my friends it's like drinking from one hose and having another hose up your i am pumping water so it's like two sets of water going up both holes at the same time. It's like very difficult to keep on top of. So cramming ain't gonna work. Making eons of notes ain't gonna work. And it took me, um, let me say semester one of first year to be like, okay, my results from semester one of first year came out, failed. And I was like, okay, I'm working really hard, but this clearly ain't it. I had to meet with my supervisors in school and we had to drop a plan. Now here comes the clutch. So during that period, I was devastated. First set of med school, you've gone so hard. You've worked so hard to get here and eventually you're here and you failed the first set of exams. So it was rather disappointing, you know? Sorry, my throat dry. So yeah, as I was saying, it was rather disappointing. So what did I, what I did then was I was Googling how to study, how to get it right, because I was studying more than my friends, more than my group of circle, in med school and they would they would say that they testified to that so i was like what is going on what's wrong here what am i doing wrong here comes the clutch ali abdal i cannot praise this man enough the guy literally 
saved my life and my medical school degree. So during that period of time, as God so would have it, I was going for a study. Uh, I was walking out of the college, met one of my friends on the bridge, and he was like, oh, we're going for a group study session. Let's go together. It was a group of guys. They're all very bright, like top of the top of the class or thereabouts. So I spent, you know, the, the period after that, studying with them, doing anatomy with them, and looking at their styles of learning. And I started to realize and see what I was doing wrong. Then I was watching Ali's videos on YouTube and... I was getting information on what is the scientific way to study. And all that while I was upset, to be honest with you. The whole time I was this sad that I hadn't done this in the Leaving Cert, hadn't done this, hadn't figured it out by the Junior Cert, hadn't figured it, fig figured it out by the Junior Cert or Leaving Cert or during college. Um, it was such an eye awakening time for me. And I, in that period of time, I remember sitting down with my sisters and going, right, I've learned how to study, guys. Let's do it. You know, I, in my church, like, I, I would teach in the Bible study sessions, like one of the Bible study sessions, instead of studying the Bible, I literally was like, right, guys, we're going to do a crash course on how to study because I was fascinated by the science of it and how effective the science was and how, I guess, a lot of people know about it, but some people don't. So I'm not going to go into the science because I'm not going to do it as well as Ali does. He, in his videos, which I'll put in the description box, he goes into the science of it, sort of the methods of studying active recall, space repetition, what else? Active recall, space repetition, and the part I was missing as well, understanding. You can't cram what you don't understand. And you think that's basic. I actually think it's basic, but I didn't realize that. And I suppose because my poor methods were, got me through a period of time, um, I didn't ever change. Now, if you think about it, it really didn't get me through, considering the fact that I did a leaving search twice, and I never got enough points to do med, med school, you know, the, the leaving cert route. I pro I'd say this is where the problem was, why I didn't get the points, because I was putting in the hours. I've always been putting in the hours. Studying has never been a problem for me. Sitting down and doing the work, never been a problem. I naturally ha happy to happy to study, especially if I'm interested or whatever. And hard work, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily bother me. Do you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people who want to study medicine or in these um, high-end point courses are probably geared towards that way. Studying isn't hard for them. But then, you know, we all know one or two people in your classes who it looks like they're doing the bare minimum, but they're getting good grades. And it's because they're quite effective in their study styles. And that's something that I, I had clearly missed out on. So having watched all of Ali's videos, I was like, right, let's implement um, all of these bits into my life. So I did. Um, I focused on understanding. Foc and I used to study and go to myself. I don't have time to understand it. I got to cram it. Especially my school time, my school timetable. We had PBL, so we would have uh, a presentation class on a Tuesday and Friday. So you got about three, three days to get, get some really big, hefty topics into your head. Get up and present it at the board without your notes. It was quite the task, quite daunting. There's a lot of things going on. You have to be confident. You're speaking to a group of highly, you know, motivated, educated, um, dedicated people. You wanted to appear that you knew the stuff too. I remember one of our immunology um, topics. I remember sitting down and we're just going, I don't understand any of this. But then I was like, you know what? There was no time to sit down and figure it out. I got to just cram this. I'm presenting on Friday. I could possibly get this. Because we used to draw out of a hat. A random learning outcome it was a bit of a disaster. I was constantly running after myself. So eventually... Um, Semester two or first year, I was like, okay, I got to understand this material. It's actually less time efficient to not understand the material. I stopped making notes altogether. No more notes. Instead, I started writing down, watch Ali's videos. You will understand exactly what I mean. He goes into, you know, how to do it. So I followed his techniques. I'd read a topic. I'd write questions. I put, um, I put uh, a little mark somewhere going. This is where I got the answer to that question. I'll, I'll add in um, towards the end of the video how I... How I did my study, but I don't really need to, honestly. Ali does it better. Um, I'll watch his videos. So, you know, I'd um, I suppose I do all of that, make those notes, uh, make questions instead of notes towards the end of the of my final med, and would go about it that way. And so I started to find myself thinking, you know, this is working. I'm understanding more. My confidence was improving. I'm, you know, seeing my LO is better, um, and I passed first year. Coming into second year then, or towards the end of first year, the group of friends that I was um, studying with, they were all using something called Anki. So because all my friends, or my study group anyway, were using Anki, I started to get into it. So I started using Anki, I was making flashcards, and I was like, yeah, all my friends are doing this, these guys are top of the class. Came into second year, semester one of second year, failed again. I was like, what 
in the name of the good Lord is going on here. I was like, what? So it turns out that after some reflection, Anki doesn't suit my learning style because the cards come in um, randomization and you end up like learning the symptom of a particular condition before before you revise the um the pathology. So I, I need to see a story in my head. I need to know, you know, um the pathology, the signs, the symptoms, the investigation, the management plan, and sort of like work it through. Or if it's like anatomy, you know, if it's the arm, I need to like, you know, go into like, you know, the whole the whole thing as a as a whole, this whole segmented learning thing did my head in. And um, my school was segmented learning, so it was very, like, ugh, our curriculum was weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, first day of med school, we learned about the year. It didn't make no sense. Um, so there was no system. But I appreciate their learning style now, coming out of it. But then, it was really tough going. So, coming to second year for um, for uh, first set of exams, failed that. And I was like, right, lads, no more anti, no more note making. I'm just going to read a book. And I read a book, read my notes ask myself questions, active recall, space repetition, did everything that Ali had advised us to do in his videos. And I said, let's give it a shot. And that's what I did, passed in second year. And that was grand. Coming into third year then, I said, I'm not changing nothing. I know how this works. I know how to study. I'm not changing nothing. Understand, repeat, revise. Leave it at that. So I started to, like, then I started to think about how am I gonna manage the, um, the amount of content that I needed to learn. And so third year and fourth year was about, because first and second year, they told us, these are all the things you need to know. Um, they didn't tell us, like they told us, these things you need to know, but go off and f find information and learn it. Third and fourth year then, they didn't tell us anything. So it was kind of like, yeah, you 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 good? You be grand? Yeah, I can't. So, so I found myself going, okay, I gotta know everything you know how do I so I use the Oxford handbook to to guide myself and I think this is what I want to present in this video because it's all about standing on the back of giants uh, don't reinvent the wheel so watch Ali's videos take from that what you can watch this video here and what I actually want to explain what I found very helpful and it actually I just want to put all of what I've said so far was providing context the next half of this video is really what I want to share from my personal experience and so taking all of this advice and adapting it to suit myself. When it came to the point of third and fourth year, I was like, okay, I know how to study. Let's get this done. Let's get this working. How do you pace yourself? It's quite the challenge. And so I spent um, third year experimenting and going to myself. If I fail, well, A, it's a disaster because unlike first and second year, there, there wasn't a there wasn't an opportunity to, to, to cover your grades because in first and second year, we had two set of exams. But in third year and final med, we had one set of exams at the end of the year, and that was that. So it was a tricky time, but I stayed with the course. I didn't change anything. And all I wanted to know was time management. All I focused my energy on was time management. Um, so I used Excel files um, and I used the Pomodoro app. So I'm going to switch to the next half of this video and I'm going to do a voiceover and sort of walk you through how I'd um, accomplish that. Hi guys, in case you're just looking to cut to the time management part and how I did studying, then skip to, um, skip to this half of the video. In case you want to, to get the full experience of my journey as a student and some of the tips from Ali's um, videos, then watch um, the first half of the video to give you a context into my experience if you're interested in that. But if you just want to be here from the time management aspect and how I um, divided my time, then you go do that. The essence of this recording for myself, this section, is really just to display what I did um, in addition to everything that Ali Abdal did and how I built up on how I built on that. Essentially, I'm just talking about my time split and how I used my 20 hour goal to um, keep myself accountable to myself um, using the Pomodoro technique because I, you know, recognized that after about 25 minute, 20 minute sessions. You know, I, I lost my attention span. And I want to scroll on Instagram. I want to respond to a message. I want to do whatever. So I used that to keep myself focused, but I also used it to keep myself on target for the week and for the month. So let's just look at a random file such as April 
2022 versus April 2020. So April 2020, I'm still in second year of med. I'm chilling. Well, I think I'm chilling anyway. Um, and I'm just like walking through DR Medical Sciences, and you can see that I'm doing pharmacy, and the figures here represents um in April 2020. The figures here represent anatomy mini cases. I'm watching Dr. Najib on, on YouTube. You know, I'm spending some time on that. So the month of April, I studied for 154 hours, 46 minutes. Split that up into the months, however where you will. But if you look at 2022, when I'm in final med, there is an additional, you know, probably 30 hours here in terms of how I'm splitting, how much work I'm doing. And I think it should be like that. I think we should pace ourselves. I think medical students should learn to um, know that they have to have a reserve of energy that they can pull from. And that involves not going as hard as you can um, in, in, the, in, in the years as you study. It's kind of pulling that energy out of your hat box slowly and slowly and realizing your fullest potential. Because if you're working too hard too quickly, you're going to burn out. And I believe that to be true. Um, as I said, the 20 hour mark was my mark of excellence personally. And I definitely pushed past that when I needed to. And, med and final med was a time when I definitely needed to. So you can see here, you've got 178 hours, 26 minutes. And at this point, because it's final med and we had eight final exams in all of these different areas, I'm pushing, you know, medicine, I'm pushing ups and kind, psychiatry, pediatrics, surgery, clinical skills revision, prof comps. So I was doing a little bit of everything. And then the others there, who knows what that was. I was maybe sometimes when I had to do something, maybe an assignment, maybe something that I didn't know. Or sometimes I didn't capture it accurately on my app. I noticed that I haven't actually plugged the app that I used. I use an app called Focus To Do. I was able to access it on my phone, on my laptop, and I found it to be extremely useful. All right, let's compare um, a couple of weeks again. So, you know, we're really looking here at um april oh we're looking at december 2019 when i had my christmas exams this is uh week two of the month so i'm preparing for exams i mean it's the lead up and um, if i look at my screenshots for the rest of the month of december you know it's 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 uh it's it's, it's working itself upwards from a week to week basis but in this particular week i had done 46 hours and 48 minutes again that's double the amount of work i'm suggesting that you guys do here but it's really just to demonstrate that in the in the, in the crux of exam time you're really um up in your hours and you're really pulling your socks and making sure that you cover everything you need to cover and the same goes for april of 2022 when this is you know we two of final med is like next like next month so there was no playing around i'm doing an additional 10 hours in final med the stakes are way higher the capacity is is much improved my focus is is higher and we ain't here to play again so again highlighting the split across the different um, modules. And I think it's interesting to note how much time I've spent on medicine here um, versus, you know, ups and down on the, other, on the other stuff. I mean, I had worked in a way that was systematic. Every time I was on those rotations, I was studying those um, those uh, modules uh, to the best of my capacity. However, medicine was my last rotation in, in final med. So it meant that you know, I was learning a lot of that stuff during that rotation and then revi revising still was happening, revision still was happening during that time. But also there was a lot of fear for me around um, medicine because I felt like I had left one of the biggest uh, modules to the, to the very end. So towards the end there, of course, my priority was making sure that I was plugging as many gaps as possible. And I was extremely worried because medicine was very broad that anything could come up. And I think that's reflected in how much time I was spending on that module. But nevertheless, again, demonstrating how working up your hours when you're coming from a baseline of excellence makes a huge difference. Finally, I want to be true to my word. I said that I aimed for 20 hours and I want to show you guys that I really did. And we can pick some random months and weeks and see that. So in February of 21, I did 20 hours and 40 minutes. 
Uh, this is December of 22. I'm doing 15 hours. That's that's not a great week for me, but I was probably stressed or chilling or lazy or something. But again, those hours keep you accountable. Um, what's happening here? The November of 21, added six hours. I don't know what the story there was, but I obviously wasn't feeling life that, that, that month, that week rather. And I wasn't pushing myself. And that's okay because it all balances out. And towards the end, you this is why towards the end, you kind of find yourself in a position where, you know, you have to pull your socks up. But also, if you have a 20-hour goal, you know that's an 80-hour goal for the month, right? So not particularly hitting that six-hour goal is fine because you just end up being in a position where, you know, okay, I didn't hit the 20 hours at this week, week one. Week two, I can catch up. I can do better. This at the weekend, I'm doing 16 hours, 50, oh, 54 minutes. And I'm, this must have been told you because I'm studying GP here. So, yeah, you know, you kind of just looking through those hours. And then finally in February of 22, 18 hours and 43. That's pretty close to the 20-hour mark. And I'm sure that if I looked through this, there would be weeks where, you know, I hit that 20-hour on the dot. And um, what's happening here this week? Um, I'm doing 26 hours. Interesting. So look, you just you have a goal, you orient yourself around that goal, and you uh, adjust according to whatever is happening that week. You could have had a more particularly stressful week than another. You could be transporting yourself uh, more than sorry, uh, transporting yourself to and from the hospital. Maybe you're going to a different clinical site, and that means having to factor in um, a little bit more time on the bus or whatever. And you have to be kind to yourself. And I think that's what I'm trying to show here is consistency is key, kindness is key, balance is key, that you can manage all of this in a reasonable way and you don't have to, you know, be studying 24-7 around the clock, but you got to have a little bit of a goal. And how do you know what's enough? And that's one of the biggest questions that medical students find themselves trying to answer. What is enough study? It's really hard. I'm trying to suggest to you that 20 hours is a marker for excellence it's a marker for consistency and having a goal like that means that you can actually stop. It allows you to stop. That's what it does because you can just keep going. So it gives you clarity. It allows you to know when to stop um, working and allows you to just sit down, pick that, sit, sit down, pick up something you're going to learn, learn what you're going to learn and close it and be able to say, that was a good day or that was a good week. Because obviously, 20 hours is roughly, if you're not going to study at the weekend, that could be five hours um, uh, five hours a day. And it also gives you that flexibility to choose without riddling yourself with guilt how you're going to study, when you're going to study, and what success and failure looks like. Like I said at the start, or maybe I haven't said it yet, you can choose if you want to stick to that 20 hours, if you want to add to it, if you want to subtract. It is a bit arbitrary, but my arbitrary number has turned out to be um, one of success for me on a personal note. And so ultimately, what I then learned is very simple. Um, I realized that I can learn at my own pace. I can um, learn with my mood. I can learn with at, at my own rate. And I kind of figured out so self-directed. I really self-directed my course. And ultimately, it was the best system for me and it increased my confidence because I was like, if I can get to third year using this system, fourth year, I'm going to stay the course. And I stood the course um, in fourth year, despite it being very, very challenging. Um, and, I, and I kept saying to myself, look, you got to third year, you did 20 hours at baseline and you passed. So keep at it. So I aimed for the 20, aimed for the 20. Sometimes I would increase to 25. Sometimes I would increase to whatever it may be. But I stay the course, increases sometimes, lows sometimes, it all averaged out. And glory be to God, we passed the exams. So ultimately, my lesson there was 20 hours was my baseline for good. Um, if you're a really strong student, you know, maybe maybe 15. If you're working, if you have full-time employment, if you have kids, it could be 15. If you have more time on your hands, maybe you're a slow paced learner. Um, or maybe you, you want to do better than just... Um, pass or you want to be excellent, whatever your reasons may be, and you have the time and the ability and the ability to 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 go as far. Thirty hours could be a baseline. Ultimately, it is arbitrary. Medicine never ends. The amount of content you have to learn is extremely 
how you could spend the equivalent of double the amount of time in school trying to figure these things out. Sometimes they ask you specialist based questions and it's not the basic knowledge. You know, they keep going about how common is common, but I saw quite a lot of very niche detailed questions in our examinations. So pace yourself, figure out what is important to you, figure out what excellence looks like to you and adjust your numbers and your figures accordingly. For me, by the end of the journey, I only wanted to pass. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wasn't trying to um, be first place or, you know, whatever. I was like, you know what? It's come to this point and I'm really exhausted. I was really tired. The exams were impossible or seemed so. We had 14 exams over the span of two weeks back to back. We would have some clinical exams in the morning, MCQs in the evenings. Um, like it was, it was, it was random. They really wanted to see who knew their stuff at the back of their minds. The exams were not set up for those who were crammers or for those who were unprepared. So I was overwhelmed to say the very least. And so, you know, I think by halfway through final med, I, was, I wasn't trying to do well. I wanted to pass. I was like, look, I got a job at the end of this. Um, please God, I will get in the scheme, which thank God I have. Um, my grades are 10% of the interview for the scheme. It's just not that important to come top, top 10. Maybe if I was in surgery, it would really help me out. Or if I was doing, I don't know, anesthetics. I don't know what scheme requires you to have 10 out of 10 for for, for, for your for your exams. But I was like, you know what, personally speaking, I can pass. Um, I've got 90% of the interviews and um, research and whatever to catch up on from my scheme. So I just felt like 10% for scheme for, to progress post-medical school wasn't enough for me to have anxiety and die because I was dealing with insomnia. I was sorry to be dramatic. <laughs> I was dealing with insomnia. I was like, I was so much. I, I was so much going. On. I was like, I just need to pass this degree and get get out of here. I'm confident that I'll get on the scheme. And look, a year post, I'm starting my pediatric scheme in about three weeks from the day, today I'm recording. By the time I post this up, I probably would have started my my first day on pediatrics. So it has worked out just fine. Um, aiming to just pass. And that's exactly what I did, guys. I just passed. And I'm very happy with um, how how it's all been. And I think me saying just pass may sound arbitrary or whatever, or may sound like I'm not aiming for the best or whatever. I remember being so upset one of the days in college because I was having a tough day. I hadn't been sleeping. I was anxious, my like my heart rate, everything was like panic attack essentially with what was going on. So I had worked myself up there. I, I found all this energy, I must the energy. I was walking up to college, I was like, you got this fairy, you got this, you got this. You, like, literally saying you got this till like, I got to the hospital from my house, accommodation to hospital was about a 20 minute walk. I arrived in a tutorial and I was just talking to one of my classmates and I was going, oh, I've done all the breakdown for the numbers and I just need to pass, you know, all these different modules and I've, I've got it here. And we were like, I was talking about the numbers and one of my tutors turned around and literally gave out to me for wanting to just pass and suggested that I was being mediocre or whatever. And I remember just, I apologized. I apologized for wanting to just pass and whatever. This particular tutor in her um, study group had been a gold medalist or whatever and um, so she'd come you know first or whatever so i remember thinking you know i apologize i felt so bad for not wanting to be better or do better whatever that means and i went home i remember sharing this with one of my friends i remember being just so aggravated and i was like i had to pull myself out of the wells to get up that morning and be at that tutorial only for you to tell me that passing wasn't good enough you don't know me you don't know my story you don't know my history and most important you don't know my baseline everybody comes into medical school with a different baseline it was much easier for someone else to get a first grade um a first class degree if they didn't have to spend first and second year um learning how to study because what happens is like i said it's fast paced if you spent first and second year learning how to study you've missed a bit of stuff there gaps in your knowledge that you are now filling in third and fourth year where other people have that gap filled and possibly surpassed and um, coming into third and fourth year. So everybody has different strengths and weaknesses and everybody's studying from a different place. We're not comparable. You can't compare my experience learning how to learn with someone who's coming in and um, maybe with a first class from their, from their, from their undergrad, who knows exactly what works for them, came in there working at the pace that I was working at in final med. It's not the same, my dear. And this is something that I'm experiencing at the moment, also in the place of work. Our baselines are different and that's okay.
I'm going to stop the video now because I can see myself going into a rant and I don't want to do that. Um, we can talk about mediocrity and excellence at, at a different stage. That's something that I'm thinking about at the moment in work and standards of of of, of work and how that difference to everybody. So listen, lads, this was a pleasure of a video. Love you lots. Challenge yourself to learn something new. Strip away a negative misconception and see you in the next video. The channel. Show.